I extend my respect to people of diverse cultures, faiths, colors, and genders, and pledge to work for equity, inclusivity, peace, and harmony. I, Ishikatya B, along with my co host J.S. Hiroki, students of DME Media School, welcome you to the technical session on site 4 of the 6th edition of the world's first 7 day standard co location conference. Our Yang 6 is organized by DME Media School in collaboration with the School of Communication and Creative Arts, DK University, Melbourne, Australia, and is sponsored by the Indian Council of Social Science Research, ICSSR. This time, Icon 6 is organized in a standard format which will take place on four different venues across India and the world. Phase 1 will be held in Delhi Metropolitan Education Noida from 19 to 21 June and Mani Kachna International Institute of Research and Studies, Paridama, on 22nd June. Phase 2 will be Makhala Chakrabedi National University of Journalism and Communication, Rupal, on 21 July and Deferral International University, Bangladesh, on 5th and 6th August 2023. I would like to take a moment and introduce organizer of the conference to our audience. Delhi Metropolitan Education, DA, is an A-grade premier educational institute affiliated to Guru Gobind Singh in Prasta University, New Delhi, and approved by the Bar Council of India. DA Media School is one of the most promising media institutes in the country. It offers BA in Journalism and Mass Communication. It is recognized as a school of focus on the growth of its faculty and students through academic and co-curricular activities. I think 6 has come with the theme, Identity, Culture and Digital Freedom Newscast with the hashtag Cultural Identity for Diversity. I think 6 has support of more than 21 partners. The conference is sponsored by Indian Council of Social Science Research. Conference partner are IAMCR Gen Section, GMAC Global Media Education Council. Knowledge partners are Manav Krishna International Institute of Research and Studies, Faridabad, Makhandal Chaturvedi National University of Journalism and Communication, Bhopal, Adamas University, Kolkata, Institute of Applied Science, Medicine and Research, IAMR, Kasabar, KSF, Keshav Suri Foundation. International partners are Deferral International University, Bangladesh, Institute for International Journalism, Ohio University, USA, Bigan House National University, Pakistan. Media partners are The Policy Times, Jenny Times, Quick News, News 44. IT6 is powered by Asian Media and Cultural Studies Network, Australia, Australia India Film Practitioners and Researchers Network, Australia. SPA, the Student Council of DNA Media School. RIM, Research and Innovation in Media, Research Center of DNA Media School. Richmond Fellowship Society India, Delhi Branch. Since 2018, DNA Media School has been organizing the international conference ITAC. The themes of the former edition were India Changing Aspects of News in ITAC 1, Indian Cinema and Alternate Networks in ITAC 2. Issues of Community, Agenda and News in ITEC 3, Information, Communication and Artificial Networks in ITEC 4, Inclusivity, Convergence and Alternative Negotiations in ITEC 5, Identity, Culture and Agenda Driven News Class in ITEC 6. This unique conference is conceptualized by Dr. Ambi Saxena, Professor and DDME Media School. He is the convener of the ITEC 6 and I invite sir to deliver this opening. I welcome everybody in this uh, technical session of DAP in uh, ITN6. And uh, in, the, in the first phase, we are having the sessions on four days. So one more day to go in the first phase. Uh, two other sessions will take place in Maharashtra, uh, International uh, Institute of Research and Studies. And then, obviously, the second lab will be in Bhopal and in Dhaka. Uh, we are trying to take our conference to the next level where uh, the deliberations are not confined to any uh, one place, one institution, but uh, there has to be more collaborations, uh, more exchanges where possible. And to this time, after this uh, COVID period, it was during COVID period 2020 and 2021, it was all in the online mode. Last year we did it in the hybrid mode. This year also it is. 
is in the hybrid mode, but we are trying to move more into physical space so that uh, more face-to-face -face, uh, discourses are possible. Uh, so, uh, and simultaneously, uh, technical sessions are happening like at this point of time. Uh, four sessions are happening, two on site, two online, uh, which is in itself is a challenge, but we are trying to provide that platform to all the uh, media generators and researchers and other scholars. So, so welcome everybody to this session. And uh, one more thing I definitely want to point out uh, that the people who have been associated with us almost right from the beginning in this kind of venture they are with us and this whole team is in any way is increasing where people are ready to contribute willingly and one such person is Dr. Gauri Chakurti who is there uh, chairing this uh, session so and this uh, the whole success of the ICAN conference has been uh, possible because of this one major factor that all good people and all those who matter in media education they have been with us, they are with us and that is how that is added value to whatever we are doing on this uh, academic platform. So I welcome uh, uh, Professor Gauri Chakurti in this session and I believe that uh, some good presentations will be made uh, followed by some so it's on lively interaction, which will benefit all the participants. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm happy to share that journalism at EME is the official newsletter of the EME Media School. This fortnightly publication covers all the major activities happening in and out of the campus. It is a student-centric newsletter carried out entirely by the, under the supervision of faculty members. The EME TV is our official YouTube channel where you can find the playlist related to all sessions, lecture series, film festivals and contests. For, all, for more information, follow us on our social media handles and YouTube channel DMT. Today, we all are here for the technical session on the topic Issues of Culture and Identity, Gender Representation in Media, Sexism and Misogyny. This session will be chaired by Dr. Gauri D. Chakraborty. Dr. Gauri is a filmmaker, artist and academician with a demonstrated history of working in the film and TV industry. Skilled in television, film, documentaries, broadcasting, and music production. A committed, uh, a committed education professor with PhD in gender and cinema. Masters in journalism and mass communication. Diploma in cinema from FTIR, Pune, and UGC Neat qualified. She was the associate producer for the award winning film, Sheep Deep, in 1997. She co headed the Amity School of Communication in Noida for 2017. She has been a media educator for the last 14 years and her research interests are feminist film theorists, dictatorship studies, and film authors. Trained in Kathak Indian classical dance by world renowned Mr. Guru Jitendra Maharaj. She has also been a research scholar and junior fellow in the history of HRD. She is the festival director for the 18th edition of the IAWRD Asian Women's Film Festival 2023 and segment curator for CIFI 2019 and 2020. She is a resource person for sensitization session on gender studies at University Grants Commission, UGC, fresh uh, programs and member of important research networks like IAMCR and IAWR and the Asian Media and Cultural Studies Network. Currently, she is working in the capacity of professor at Times School of Media, Bennett University, Greater Lauda. Now, I request Dr. Ramri Saxena, DTM Media School, and Dr. Susmita Bala, Head of the Media School, to come and participate. Mm -hmm. The session is co chaired by Dr. Sumita Daspana, Assistant Professor, DNA Media School. Dr. Sumita Daspana is Assistant Professor in DNA Media School. Delhi Metropolitan Education Order, affiliated to Guru Gopin Singh in Prastha University. She is Associate Editor of the NE Media School for 19 newsletter. She has completed her graduation, post-graduation and PhD from Guru Jambeshwar University of Science and Technology, Bihar. She possesses five years of work experience in public relations with leading public relations agencies of Delhi. Her academic career started with Jagannath Institute of Management Sciences, New Delhi, 
where she taught for a year and a half later on, she taught at C.H. Bansi Rai University, Diwali, for a short stay and the Vekana Institute of Professional Studies, New Delhi, for a year. Dr. Sumita Rasmana has various research papers to her credit and has been part of many national and international conferences and seminars. She believes in honesty, integrity, humanity and inclusivity. Her area of interest is writing, new media and public relations. Now I hand over the co chair to begin the session. Thank you so much, Ashira. I welcome session chair Dr. Gauri D. Chakraborty, Professor at Times School of Media at Edinburgh University. I welcome the paper presenters and delegates present in this session. The theme of today's session is issues of culture and identity, gender representation in media, sexism and misogyny. There are total seven presentations in this session. Each participant will be given eight minutes time. Q&A can be taken immediately after your presentation and Dr. Gauri Chakraborty will be given for concluding remarks in the end. I now seek permission from the chair to allow me to start the session. Thank you so much, ma'am. So, the first paper presentation is Media and Gender Inequality in India, Understanding the Impact. This paper presentation is by Vatsal Omar, student, Delhi Metropolitan Education in Canada. Vatsal, please come. Good morning, respected ma'am and sir. I am Vatsal Omar. I am currently uh, researching on the topic media and gender inequality in the 20th India. Women are often portrayed as being more emotional, less intelligent, and less capable than men. They are also more likely to be depicted in traditional gender roles such as mother, wives, and caregivers. Women are less likely to be seen in position of power or authority, and they are more likely to be portrayed in the stereotypical roles. The scope of research, the scope of research will include films, TV series, music videos, and OTT content. The research, this research paper will uh, adapt the research methodology of a mixed method approach, combining both primary and secondary research methods. The primary methodology will include surveys and questionnaires, and the secondary methodology will include content analysis. I have started with secondary methodology uh, by starting content analysis and the content selection criteria was popularity and impact and genre diversity. Uh, I have uh, finalized few films and TV series based on the popularity and their impact in, on the Indian audience and here are some music videos which was finalized by me. I have first analyzed the Tanga movie uh, released in 2016. It has shown a strong and independent female character, but it also has a mixed representation of women. It has also showed a stereotypical uh, portrayal of women. Next, I have analyzed a movie Kabir Singh, which was released in 2019. Women are shown as being weak and helpless in this movie and also being dependent on the women. Women are also shown as being object of desire. Next, I have analyzed the movie Padman released on 2018. In this movie, women are shown as being strong and independent and being supportive, supportive to each other and they are shown as being capable of change. Next, I have analyzed a TV series of Amazon Prime named Elsa Bor. In this series, the female characters are often confined, confined to traditional gender roles. There are also some female characters in Elsa Bor who challenge uh, traditional gender roles. The female characters in Mirza Bhur are often objectified and socialized. Uh, this was my progress till now. I have researched uh, till here and uh, I am currently for researching further on this. Even though women are the same, it's a normal thing that they will do that 
hierarchical attitude uh, that persuade that section and normalization of hierarchical uh, So, um, so for my uh, research paper, uh, I wanted to, as I just uh, told you about the social question and legal aspect. So, uh, while researching, I got two similar, similar stories to my research paper. That was social cultural perspectives, uh, which was given by the Lee Vygotsky social cultural story. He basically believed that the mind emerges out of an interaction between social cultural environments. And he also believed that the cognitive development can occur from culture to culture and environment to environment. So, for an example, if we uh, see two siblings, a uh, boy and a girl, they can be different, being uh, risen by a uh, similar parents. In a similar, similar, even in the similar culture, then also they can act differently. If we, you know, uh, see in the flashback, right, the boy, how he was writing, right, that uh, he, a girl was given like uh, homemaker toys and a boy with a uh, coffee gloves and all. It makes people thinking mentality different. So we can see that deeply enhanced uh, enriched patriarchal attitude that persuade the acceptance and normalization of manual the This kind of thing, the norm, it, it's very common. So, in my research, I have done a focus group discussion. So, in that, I have taken some segments uh, and uh, invited uh, some of the participants like lawyers, academicians, police officers, and uh, journalists in my study. To earlier as we So, first of all, I would like to uh, tell you about the legal framework. Historically, uh, manipulate is not recognized as a criminal offense. If we uh, talk about the IPC section, uh, Article Section 375, which states rape as a crime in the whole, but it has an exception which states that if the wife is not under the age of 15, it will not be said as a rape. So if we think about the age 50, where people are discussing uh, and debating regarding the age of 18 to 21, here I guess uh, there is a new code which say which still says the age of 15, which is uh, which should be which must be changed, but it is not even under the discussion right now. Yeah, by the uh, if we know the RIT Foundation has already uh, filed a petition on it, still it is under the. Uh, the jurisdiction and the center is holding the power, uh, they are having the power of this. But still, they are still discussing on it as uh, there is a notion that if this kind of criminalization happens in our country, then cultural or uh, religious values can be affected through this. So, uh, on psychological impact, the survivors are having like post-traumatic stress disorder, depression, anxiety, fear, uh, loss of, um, uh, I mean they can be isolated or social withdrawal. These are some of the situations that can be happening. Now, I want to uh, talk about academic impact on mental health. Uh, as we know that academic research has played a very significant role in shaping the understanding and recognition of mental health as a serious issue in the country. And uh, scholars all around the world, they have evidence to challenge existing laws that exempt mental health from criminal uh, prosecution or impose lesser penalties. There are many countries who have already criminalized this. And uh, like Australia, Poland, Russia and all. So they work as influence policy makers leading to change in legislation in many countries. Then why not in India? So the aim of my research paper is to shed light on the multiple social, cultural and legal dimensions on marriage in India. The study aims to raise awareness and stimulate discussions. The methodology I have chosen is a qualitative approach. A focus group discussion was taken. A participation of seven esteemed panelists were done. Uh, two legal experts, two members of the police department and esteemed academics and two Journalists. So, uh, one of uh, another theory which I have chosen was self perception theory, which, which was totally linked to this research paper as the individual develop their 
attitudes and beliefs by observing their own behavior, which can influence the case studies and in their, uh, especially in their professional lives. Suppose if a uh, academician uh, like you, maybe if you are working on a feminist role, uh, I'm like I'm working on a gender and media studies. So we know this in in depth and we are having our own psychic and our perception, the intellectual, we are thinking about it. And it can happen that we might be, you know, uh, we know the positive and negative side of each and everything, but we might say rationally about this. The, and the people feel their attitudes and belief about the subject uh, by thinking back on their own behavior and the environment in which that behavior takes place. And it's, it's very normal. So a different perspective on marital rape I got when I did the focus group discussion was like as a journalist, I covered numerous cases of marital rape and it is clear that there are a dire number need for the legal protection. Marital rape is a violation of a person's autonomy, dignity and consent regardless of the relationship. Criminalizing it would be the send a strong message that no one is above the law. A journalist who said this. And uh, it was kind of a, it converted into a debatable kind of when the lawyer said criminalizing marital rape may harm cultural and religious values. And so on the, it was a you know a focus group discussion was uh, till I guess one hour it extended. I don't want to extend it uh, so long, but the panelist was uh, still debating, and I was I don't I was seriously confused where to stop them. So in conclusion, I would like to say that the research showed that professionals from various disciplines, including journalists, academicians, police officers, and attorneys, had a variety of viewpoints. And I myself cannot say that who is right and who is wrong.
कि जैसे लोग बोलते हैं कि कल्चरल और यू नो रिलीजियस वैल्यू पे अफेक्ट कर सकता है पर सब तक बिग से बिग केसेस भी आ सकते हैं और आएंगे जब सारे टॉपिक में आते हैं मर्डर के पे केसेस हैं तो इसमें भी आ सकते हैं देर आर हाई चांसेस बट हाँ वहाँ उन केसेस को देख सकते हैं जो बहुत ही सीरियर है जो कि बहुत ब्रूटल केसेस हैं आप उनको सबसे पहले देख सकते हैं जैसे कि कोविड नाइन्टीन आया था और हमारे पास कोई वैक्सीनेशन नहीं थी लेकिन डेवलप की गई है इसके रिगार्डिंग भी जब हम इस पर बात करेंगे चर्चा होगी पैनलिस्ट बैठेंगे जब इस पर काम होगा तो आई बी इसके ऊपर भी कुछ ना कुछ होना चाहिए सोल्यूशन और जब ये आएगा तो कहते हैं ना कि लॉस सबसे ऊपर है जब तक नहीं पता चलेगा और हमारे कंट्री में जो जेंडर वाइसनेस और जो पेट्रिया सिस्टम है आई एम नॉट सेम आई एम नॉट यू नो मैं एक राष्ट्रीय थॉट से कह रही हूँ कि अगर इस चीज़ के बारे में अगर सोचा जाए तो जैसे कहा जाता है कि सबसे पहले अगर एक पता चलता है कि वुमेन इज प्रेगनेंट सबसे पहले दिल्ली के हार्ट बीट आ गया उसके बॉडी पार्ट जेंडर सब बाद में पता चलता है तो हम क्यों नहीं उस एक हार्ट बीट के बारे में बीन का ह्यूमन सोचते हैं हम उसको बीन का जेंडर पहले Have you checked that if anyone else has worked on this? Uh, yes. Paper? So what was their opinion? Did the literature review a lot? Yes, sir. Actually, I have been facing the same kind of problem. Because I have been studying the same aspects. And I have been trying to work with some aspects. But I have been trying to work with some victims. So I have been trying to work with some victims. बाकी स्कॉलर्स और रिसर्चर्स का पढ़ा है इसके ऊपर तो काफ़ी उनके जो स्कॉलर्स हैं वो एक काइंड ऑफ प्रॉपर कंक्लूजन नहीं देना चाहते हैं इसमें क्योंकि वो बायस है अगर हम कोई एक प्रॉपर कंक्लूजन नहीं ना पॉजिटिव ना नेगेटिव जो लोग बोलते हैं कि होना चाहिए वो भी ठीक है जो कहते हैं नहीं होना चाहिए वो भी काइंड ऑफ ठीक है क्योंकि एवरी वन हैविंग ए परसेप्शन एंड जब हम परसेप्शन देखते हैं तो हम अपने दिमाग में एक ऑलरेडी थॉट बना लेते हैं ऐसा है तो इसलिए हम खुद को डिफाइन देते हैं बिकॉज करके ऐसा है तो इसलिए सो मैं मैंने भी कंक्लूजन में ये चीज़ नहीं डाली कि होना चाहिए या नहीं होना चाहिए मैंने बीन एज अ रिसर्चर बीन अनवाइस पर्सन मैंने उनके थॉट्स को रखा है इसमें और मैंने जितने रिसर्चर था उनकी परसेप्शन भी मैंने इसमें डाले हैं इसलिए मैंने थोड़ी सी कंसल्ट किया आई बिलीव कि हर इस चीज़ को अगर मैं थोड़ी जोड़ूंगी तो वो ज़्यादा अच्छे से मैं डिफाइन कर पाऊँगी अच्छी तरह Have you ever heard, heard of the term victimology? 
uh, part of the relationship. Uh, feminist film theory is the theoretical framework. Uh, it studies films as texts and examines how women are represented across various film genres. It uh, argues that representation of women in contemporary cinema offer a potentially limitless study for analyzing gender equalities in society. And as Piper argues, reading and interpreting, interpreting contemporary film is one of the main, many feminist strategies that should be used to unravel the relationship between everyday life and media culture. And now, uh, and the context. In Hindi films, when, where the father-daughter relationship is important for the plot, the father is often shown as a widower, with the heroine as his only daughter and without the interference of mother or any sibling whatsoever. The setting of a father-daughter relationship also tends towards extremes of fantasy. Either the father is a very rich man and the daughter a self-built spoiled princess, mostly in Kade Khan and Ravina Dhanji films. Or he is a very poor man and the daughter uh, the sole heroic um, crutch of a poor ailing father. In contrast to the mother-son interactions, many of which are located in the hero's childhood, the father-daughter scenes take place primarily in the heroine's adolescence when she reaches the Indian age of marriage, wherein most of the films start off showing daughter finishing her schooling or college and simultaneously the father is searching for a match for her without any discussions about her individual want or career whatsoever. Some of the films also propagate the notion that if the father is not able to get his daughter married well within the correct age to a good family, he is failing as a father. The fact that daughters are to be given off well within time or that they are pariah dhan, someone else's property, got ingrained into audiences' minds through so many similar cinematic texts depicting the same thing over the years. Anything different to that was seen as a challenge to the father's authority as a patriarch. The girl's desire was of little account when it came to arranging her own marriage or whether or not she wanted to do it. The choice of groom is entirely the father's and abiding by that choice is a question of his personal honor. So this is a few uh, details about the film. This is Mohabadeh and Pihu. So I also tried to uh, take something from the myth uh, because um, in India's context, while the epics, Vedas and Puranas are an integral part of the country's popular culture and consequently the visual arts, Indian cinema, has always inclined towards either fully following the myth or adapting and drawing uh, inspiration from it in, 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 in a way. In the same manner, the films selected for the analysis also fall in the Hindu myth mythological prototype of a father-daughter duo. Uh, so I have taken uh, Daksh and Sati as uh, Narayan Shankar and Megha from Mohammade because um, both of them are kind of negatively famous for not allowing their daughters to marry who they wanted to. And, um, and in both the cases, uh, by Sati jumping fire, uh, Megha, uh, you know, she died by suicide. And in Piku, I have tried to match uh, them with Janak and Sita. Um, so because uh, in mythology it is uh, written that um, Janak was an involved father who raised happier and confident daughters and while uh, the Swamiya's was also arranged but it also depended on Sita's uh, like if there was, Sita was allowed to say who she wanted to marry and, because, and also there was a clause because he had seen Sita pull up the, the bow of Shiva when she was young so Janak wanted someone to be of that, uh, uh, I'm forgetting the word, that big caliber. caliber. Yes, uh, who would be able to uh, match Sita's caliber to be able to pick that. Uh, so I thought Mashkur Banerjee and Piku Banerjee to be of that. And uh, so I have taken out four points here um, in the discussion. The first is the relationship of a father-daughter. I have then uh, further divided into uh, three parts, communication, shared activity and advices. Uh, it, it, this has been done according to the attachment theory, uh, which says that, um, that the primary giver, the, the, there should be an attachment between the primary giver and the child, so that the child grows up to be a confident and a person who is able to, um, uh, like, to be confident in his, in his or her social circles as well. 
So uh, while in Mohammed day there was communication, there was communication, but it was very limited only to when they were doing the daily activities like giving of the TV or the food or the medicines, normal daily conversations. People there were there were conversations like almost on a like the whole film was only about conversations, and there was no shared activity in Mohammed day. Mohammed day like the like um, Narayan Shankar and Megha did not involve any uh, activities which had both of them doing anything um, because he left for Gurukul and back at home she was either stitching or doing something else. In Piku there was there were a lot of shared activities. They had lunches together, they had dinners together, they even travelled together. So and advices by Mohammed, the father's advice was the only advice she had to follow. In Piku uh, some some of the times her advices were also given. What they listen to or not is another, but she was open to say what she wanted to say. Father is a protector. Uh, so the another thing which came out uh, from both the films was that, uh, I'm not going to read all of this, it's very long, but I, what I want to say is that uh, both the, in both the films, the father as a protector was very evident. In, in Mohabate, uh, Narayan Shankar wanted uh, to protect two things, his honour and his daughter from not marrying a person he does not like. And in a way protect his ego that she, she will marry. He, because the marriage was there, he wanted her to marry, she was getting ready with her mother's dupatta and mother's sutra, she was getting all of that. So he wanted her to marry but not to the person she likes. In Piku, uh, at the end of the film, when the film ends, the doctor says to Piku that he he wanted uh, that Bhaskar uh, never wanted her to marry Sai because he was also going through constipation. So in a way, he was also trying to be protective of her to not go through what she has gone through with her father. Like if she married Sai, she had to go through everything, the process of constipation, the medications, and all of that. So in a way, he was also trying to protect her from not marrying someone who might not fit what her character is or what her daily life is. Uh, so in Angrezi medium or Dil Dhadakne do also I cross referred these two films. In Dil Dhadakne do Anil Kapoor stands up for her daughter when, uh, not when she was talking of, of divorce but when uh, the, her, his, her, uh, her husband stood up to hit her. That's when uh, Anil Kapoor also stood up. And in Angrezi medium, when Ifan Khan um, sent his daughter outside to study, uh, there also he went to see if she was partying or she was uh, what her friends were look like. He actually went abroad to uh, like keep an eye on her. So uh, another trope within the context of protecting one's daughter comes uh, the institution of marriage, where one of the main ideas of marriage has been to shift the daughter from under one protection to another that is from the care of her father to the husband. While Mahogati Narayan Shankar fully believes in the idea of marriage and tries to conventionally protect his daughter from marrying a boy he doesn't like, in Tipu, Mahashwar Banerjee outrightly negates the idea of marriage which is just done just for the sake of it. He stands by his opinion that his daughter should marry someone who she has emotional connection with. And also in the end, after he dies, the audience comes to know that he didn't want her to marry Sai who also had a constipation problem in order to protect her from future hazards. Uh, a representation of a propositional father-daughter relationship offers an important challenge to fathers like that of Mohabadeh, which construct them as stern, uh, patriarchal figures who would rather see their daughters suffering than shame, and whose stringent control over their daughters' lives is uh, always held up in contrast to the modern progressive father. In people, Hashkar's love for his daughter, despite her agency in all the spheres of her life, reminded viewers that paternal love is not conditional on the ability to control and eventually auction off a docile, naive, and obedient daughter. He is encouraging of his daughter's ambitions and is absolutely fine with her being sexually independent, even when those are not a part of the prevailing cultural and societal norms surrounding femininity. And the last is from a mere responsibility to being heard as a person having own identity. One positive change which has come up in the forefront of a film like Piku is that daughters are now being seen, heard and given the new face as an individual person having 
their own identity and say they are being shown to take their education and career seriously and do whatever it takes to what they want to be. And uh, this was just a like conclusion of what both of them is like a comparison actually. And um, relocating the father-daughter relationship through the analysis of Piku and by studying it parallelly to another hit film of its time, Mohan the Day, the study argues that Piku deviates from the prevailing dominant structures of a father-daughter relation and is the first of its kind to have given a space to films that depict a more layered, chiseled cinematic image of a father. Yeah. Oh, here's Haskot, who is wanting to be a dad and has a suitable father to his daughter. However, the character of Haskot has his own limitations to wherein he upholds the notion that fathers are the protector of their daughter and also does not reject the idea of marriage only, rather wants his daughter to marry someone who she is emotionally connected to and not just for the sake of getting married. Even so, the film with its own sets of setbacks compels the audience to unlearn, rethink, and relocate the contours of this relationship. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. I, I just focused on these two. There are many films that I've seen. Right. Obviously.
the main findings and outcomes of my study will be emphasized and their significance and potential implications will be summarized. Any limitation of my study will also be acknowledged and mentioned and the potential implications of findings or any suggestions or recommendations which arise from my research can also be explored and considered. Thank you. Modernization theory. Modernization 
organization and modernization theory is basically the same thing and the concept and the same understanding. So uh, it is traced back to the Dean's 1993, 1993 theory. It holds the same meaning and concept that is the development and change we see in technological advancements, education system and even the cultural preservation in our country or all over the world. This is called modernization and it is the theory itself. So now we must understand what the introduction of modernization in India. Where the modernization being introduced in India? So the modernization in India is introduced by the Britishers or the, or the colonizers. They brought modernization in India when they invaded in India. They came as traders but changed all over our all over our history, our heritage, and India in all the perspective. We know that India is a land of um, vast heritage, cultural history, but now what we see, it is hugely impacted by the Western cultures and the Britishers itself till this day. So, what Britishers, include, uh, what Britishers did to our country, that is, changed our culture and history and manipulated our traditions. Especially the Hindu tradition, they have changed our transcripts. They have changed our Upanishads, Vedas. They did every possible thing to manipulate our Indians so that we can never progress and they made us their slaves. So this is called introduction of modernization or uh, so, uh, slavery till now. I'm not saying that modernization is all bad, but modernization uh, also um, helped in the technological advancements, uh, education system, and economic growth. We see the pros of modernization on Indian culture and social values, that is economic growth and development. Modernization has contributed significantly to India's economy and development. And today we are accessing everything on our fingertips. What is that? It is because of the internet. And how it come? Because of modernization, because of technological advancements. It was not there before, but it came after modernization. Increased access to information and education. We see that we can learn any new skills and go beyond our capabilities because now we have more than 100 options to choose and perform our best. Cultural exchange and diversity. Modernization has facilitated cultural exchange and diversity by breaking down geographical barriers and promoting cross-cultural interactions. By uh, globalization, we can interact from anyone um, in the, huge, uh, the whole world and we can uh, learn about their cultures, learn about their traditions and ideas, what they think about our culture and what we can uh, think about their culture, we can uh, do it. Now, forms of modernization on Indian culture and social values. I think this is the most important part, and I believe really, uh, we should understand this because I think it is a need of the hour. Now, we see, especially our youth is highly influenced by the modern culture, Western culture, leaving around their own precious culture behind. Uh, most of the youth do not know the value of our own culture. They are just highly influenced by the modern culture, keeping aside our traditional cultures. Uh, I can bet in this uh, hall also, there is hardly anyone who follow our culture with modernization. So, generation gap. It widened the generation gap between younger and older generation. Younger generations are influenced by global trend. Same thing and technological advancement. Forgetting our age-long practices, they are just influenced by the technological advancements because the facilities they are getting from it and the comfort they are getting from the modernization, they just skip out our 
traditional values. Now, uh, at last, I will just say how can we hold on to our culture. It is very important part of it, and we must hold on to our culture and tradition because India was known as the country of great culture, heritage, and we cannot just pick it out due to westernization. It is the time that we must hold on to our traditional roots and maintain our identity because we must stand out, out of the crowd and we must prove that India is still united and there is unity and diversity. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. 
your objectives, questions, that would be something we would be very curious about. to know 
the research methodology is the research is explorative and qualitative in nature. The research study is based on secondary data only. Content analysis of two news portals has been done, which publishes news stories reported by citizen journalists. That is uh, NPT, Navara Times Citizen Reporter, and the Quill Citizen Reporter. The news stories are selected on the basis of the popularity of the news and the kind of issues the stories are focusing. So, this is the literature review. Uh, by, uh, after a uh, literature review, I concluded that there are two types of citizen journalists uh, which work. Uh, like, they can work by themselves or uh, they can work uh, with the media. By working with themselves, they can uh, write through the social media or through blogs or websites. And uh, by working with media houses, citizen journalists can work with connecting on articles, crowdsourcing and live blogs. Citizen journalism is how regular people in the public, rather than professional journalists, gather and disseminate information online. Citizen uh, journalists can convey the voice of the common person by doing this. So these are the finding and analysis of my uh, research paper. The finding and analysis of the research study are based on the data collected on uh, so these two uh, portals which allow the citizen reporter to write uh, about the news which are uh, not uh, getting attention to the mainstream media. So the citizen reporter goes to write about the common issues which are uh, uh, facing by the common, common people. The comparison, uh, com uh, comparison between mainstream media and citizen journalism. So mainstream media works on formalized structure, while citizen journalism has no formal newsroom structure. They can uh, post or write news from any anywhere. They don't have any uh, particular uh, uh, particular. Uh, they don't have any particular aura in which they have to work. Mainstream media gatekeeper and regulatory body exist. Why citizen journalism no filtering, no gatekeeping and regulatory model? Uh, there are some positive and negative impact of citizen journalism uh, in areas uh, where mainstream media is biased or manipulated due to government or the ruling party. Citizen journalism act as a street to avoid the propaganda of country controlled conventional media and make certain that many voices are heard. So I have taken some uh, samples uh, of the reports which are uh, which have been written into these two new portals. Uh, for example, uh, I have taken these. Uh, the first news is from the Quinn, and the second is from the Navharat Times Citizen Reporter. And these issues were solved after some time of the reporter uh, reports have been uh, reported in the newspaper. So these are some more examples like the faulty wiring open gutter in dangerous condition, accident near school, problem due to overflow of sewer line, uh, how citizens transform Gurugram, the city without a green cover. So these are uh, the headlines of the news which are written by the common people on the citizen portal. So the citizen journalism's contribution in bringing attention towards India's populations. So the growth of citizen journalism has been significantly impacted by the rise of mobile technology including smartphones, tablets and other portable devices. As an individual reporting on any subject at all, it becomes their duty to ensure that any information they disseminate is accurate and verified to establish sources. The future of citizen journalism in Indian perspective. Uh, in order to practice citizen journalism, you must have the capacity to hear what others have to say as well as to express your own opinion. India and the rest of the globe are developing and recognizing citizen journalism as a means of means to use social media and new technology to spread awareness about the vital topics. So the conclusion, conclusion of my study is citizen journalists are now playing a very important role in society by utilizing their freedom of expression. The rapid increase of internet and social media has increased citizen journalism all over the world. In order to safeguard their freedom of expression, there should be laws in which protect citizen journalism.
situation where citizen journalists seem to be helpful for the slum areas by covering their social issues which are usually ignored by mainstream media due to le less TRC. Work of media is always to be with time, but sometimes important issues are lost with uh, time which are continuously raised by citizen journalists and they maintain the dignity of the issue which should remain highlight about government. past work 
uh, that you have read. So that is also hugely missing in a lot of work that we saw today. Uh, please tell the audience, tell your receivers whether you are countering that theory or you are extending that point of view. Yeah. So research is it's such a beautiful term, research. You know, what a beautiful term can that be? So please do that. You know, you have to have as a critical thinker, say this is what this theory says. But I argue or I agree or I forward this point of view. That is really important to everything that it has been said today. Uh, there were a lot of presentations where emotions were coming into play, personal beliefs were coming into play. I, I uh, beseech you, I humbly request you, do not allow personal belief. So as a, as a feminist, as a gender activist, uh, sometimes I feel like actually saying, I hate men for what they did to us, but I don't say it. You can't, you can't take that stance because there's a reason why things happen. Yeah. So never, so there were two, three presentations where it was too clear that you are believing so. Please don't do that ever again. It's my humble suggestion. Uh, have a clear methodology. And some presentations had a slide that said methodology, ta ta ta. The audience knows, the listeners know, the, you know, the persons on the call, the platform understand what you're doing. Uh, the sample universe for some of our presentations were huge. Uh, it's not as if it was possible. Uh, you know, even in the task for the moment, you see, in India, you had it. Yeah, you would have really hundreds of people to do that research. Uh, there were generic terms that were uh, used and not explained to too general. Uh, and then, if you want to really, um, you know, kind of talk about gender research, begin with small steps. Gender is a very layered term, and today they don't just talk about gender uh, equality, they talk about gender neutrality, gender balance, uh, they talk about intersectionality, and intersectionality in the West is very different from when you know when you include race, uh, class, but in India uh, you cannot avoid caste in intersectionality. So we never hear of, I'm, I'm saddened that there's nothing on Dalit feminism in this forum. Think about it. So Vinaya, I'm giving thoughts to you. You had so many nice questions for us. Uh, good, uh, we need a question asking the award should also be. <laughs> and uh, absolutism should be avoided. And last but not the least, the topic and the pathway of the research needs to be really, really clear. Uh, you are all, uh, a lot, many of you have begun your journey. So it's absolutely okay to trip, to falter, to have some fun, but over time, you will be where we are. And that is something, that is a responsibility you will take. A lot of you will do your PhDs and you know, get into the education system. Therefore, never take your research lightly. Let the research become your body itself. When you talk, you should only be talking sense. So with those words, I would like to close again. I am very grateful to uh, Sir and to Pam. You know, uh, you should be for community at the end. It's such a pride that this is ICANN 6, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So uh, we look at this event with great um, appreciation. We understand what work goes behind it. And that's the reason when Professor Sanjana said a lot of us come in. It's because it really is an adrenaline rush to be at DME, especially when Professor Sassana and Sushma Sassana are there. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, ma'am. I now invite uh, Dr. Sushma Bhada at the media school to give a one to the remarks.
अगेन यू आर डिसर्जिंग एनीथिंग एंड जो छोटा सा टॉपिक टॉपिक क्रिस्प होना चाहिए हमेशा क्या होता है स्टूडेंट्स बहुत बड़ा टॉपिक लेते हैं और वो पूरा इंडिया का सर्वे कर देते हैं जस्ट टेक वन इंडिया टेक वन स्पेसिफिक एरिया वन सब्जेक्ट वन थीम देन रिसर्च जो सिटीजन जर्नलिज्म का भी लिया था उसने उसमें जो एक पर्टिकुलर एरिया ले सकते थे मीन्स नोएडा से कितनी रिपोर्ट्स आज सिटीजन जर्नलिस्ट लोग रिपोर्ट करते हैं क्योंकि आप पूरे उसको नहीं किसी भी तरह एक्सप्लेन नहीं कर सकते जस्ट एक बार न्यूज पेपर कितनी रिपोर्ट्स वहां आ रहे हैं तो हमारे लिए रिसर्च इज नॉट सो इजी टास्क इसीलिए मैं जब भी रिसर्च की बात करती हूँ कि आप थोड़ा स्पेसिफिक हो जाइए आपका टारगेट ऑडियंस क्या है आपका कितना सैम्पल साइज है सैम्पल साइज आप लेते हैं सर्वे करते हैं आपको पता नहीं होता आप होते हैं नोएडा में कर लिया दिल्ली में कर लिया एनसीआर में कर लिया नहीं आपका एक पर्टिकुलर हंड्रेड लोगों से आप बात कर रहे हैं फिफ्टी से बात कर रहे हैं स्पेसिफिक कर रहना पड़ेगा अगर आप उसको बिल्कुल नैरो डाउन नहीं करेंगे तो आप काम नहीं कर सकते जितना उसको स्प्रेड करते जाओगे एरिया बढ़ता जाएगा फिर उसको लास्ट में जब समअप करने की कोशिश करोगे तो डेट विल भी डिफिकल्ट फॉर ऑल ऑफ यू अभी लर्निंग स्टेज में है सो जस्ट थिंक अबाउट है ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच मारा मैम थैंक यू सो मच गौरी मैम थैंक यू फॉर शेयरिंग योर इन वैल्यूबल इंसाइट्स एंड वर्ड्स ऑफ वेस्टर्न विद अस आई एम श्योर दे ऑल ऑल ऑफ अस हैव लर्न फ्रॉम यू मैम सो नाउ आई रिक्वेस्ट गौरी मैम एंड आदर डिग्रीज Today at 7 p.m. in the online mode of Zoom. 